Okay, now this topic gets me so wary. And I'm excited to share this with you here today. So I saw the tweet pop up in my timeline describing this topic that we're talking about, and I kind of flipped. Like, I kind of shut everything down, and I took a while to process it, but essentially, what we're talking about here is a claim made by AJ Jakubic once again. And the most previous video we had talking about these guys was referring to another AJ Jakubic statement. To catch you up to speed, pretty much AJ Jakubec doubled down on Ottawa Radio, where in the radio hit, he highlighted how he believes the LA Kings are going to take Tim Stutzla second overall. And it wasn't really a question in his mind. The way he portrayed it, the way the tweets were talking about it, he doubled down and he said, yes, there is no way that Stutzla goes beyond second overall. Then, there was a reply to the tweet by My Opinion Dog, and he said this, I don't think AJ Jakubic has any credibility. He made claims about Ellie's decision when Mark Yannetti came out and stated they have yet to do any work on the pick. Now he's doubling down when LA media like John Mayer, who has a proven record, said they are more likely to take Byfield. And then AJ Jakubic actually replies to this tweet, and he says this, I talked to scouts and management from four different NHL teams and two connected to the DEL. I never said he's 100% going to LA, but there's a strong chance they take him at two if he's still available. There's a belief that some play-in teams have Stutzla and Byfield at one. Thanks for coming out though, hashtag credibility. What? If any NHL team has Tim Stutzla or Quinton Byfield at one, then that means that Lafreniere isn't one. Is there a possibility that Alexi Lafreniere goes number two? And I can't believe we're making a video about this in July. This is supposed to be the time where the NHL entry draft is concluded and we're in the summer signing prospects and waiting for guys to do their thing once training camp starts in September. But now, Alexi Lafreniere may even be in contention for that second overall spot if some NHL teams value Tim Stutzla or Quinton Byfield that highly. Now I know what you're thinking. Lego Rocks 99 is a YouTuber who has made so many YouTube videos about the different possibilities at this draft that it's redundant to make a video about Lafreniere going second overall. You've already made a video talking about how Tim Stutzla isn't a guarantee for number three. You already talked about how Marco Rossi could go second. You already talked about how Tim Stutzla could also go first too. So in order to get that grand slam, you gotta get the Lafreniere at number two video out, eh? Right, Lego? And I know there's gonna be some people who think like that. It's inevitable when you have a few people watching your stuff online, you're not gonna be able to please everybody. I get that. But the thing is, when you think about the 2020 NHL draft and you take a look at the guys who have been at the top, Many of these guys have been at the top for a while. Quinton Byfield was a guy who I made a video about all the way back in 2018, asking the question on whether or not he would be able to go first overall. And that video was made because I saw a Quinton Byfield article in my edition of the Hockey News, the Hockey News magazine that I picked up at the convenience store just a four minute walk away from my high school during my C block spare in the second semester. And I looked at that article and I said, okay, great, this guy is going to be amazing. He's following the same path as Connor McDavid with the AAA hockey success. The fact that he is with the same agency that Connor McDavid was with. The fact that he is 16 years old and he's already going through strict diet plans and working extremely hard off the ice to become a pro hockey player. That says to me that this guy could become a beast. And for the most part, he was ranked second overall this entire year, with some people in the media even projecting him to be a first overall caliber player. And the fact is, Byfield's ceiling is so exponentially high that if you drafted him first overall, there's a reason behind it, and it's understandable. Also compiled with the fact that Lafreniere is a winger, and the fact that Byfield is a center, and he could become a number one center who can define a franchise, and he would probably be the number one center on most, if not any, NHL team by the time he hits his prime. This is the kind of guy who I believed all the way back as an 18-year-old in high school could become a first overall pick in the 2020 draft. But the other guy, Tim Stutzla, that's a different story. Tim Stutzla kind of exploded onto the scene like a year ago, 
And a year ago, he wasn't even exploded onto the scene in the same way he is now. A year ago, Tim Stutzla was over a point per game in the U20 Junior German League as a 17-year-old. So... I was super high on him too, because German hockey is something that's on the rise. We saw the guys like Leon Dreisaitl in 2014 be taken. Then recently, we saw guys like Moritz Seider in 2019, Dominic Bach in 2018. We saw a lot of German guys starting to be taken in these drafts, and Tim Stutzla looked to lead the class for 2020 in that department. However, not too many people expected Stutzla to explode onto the pro men scene as a player just under a point per game and dominate the world juniors the way he did. Did. With a bigger stage in front of him, Tim Stutzla was able to show off to the masses that this guy could be NHL ready already, and the projection for this player as a high-scoring, dynamic offensive winger is just so, so strong. Which is why he was highlighted as the second-best prospect for TSN and Bob McKenzie, and currently he is ranked second by a few outlets. It adds all the more fuel to the fire as to why we even made that first overall video a few months ago, asking whether or not if Detroit had the first overall pick, they'd take him because they already took Cider last year. But now, with word from AJ Jakubic that... Oh man, some playing teams have Stutzla and Byfield that won... It changes up the entire dynamic for that first overall pick that belongs to a play-in loser team. Because we already highlighted it in our video talking about the Lafreniere sweepstakes, but pretty much every NHL team in the play-in series has the ability to get that first overall pick. Because the ones that don't have their 2021st, they all have clauses on them. They all have stipulations that say, oh, if they make the playoffs, then the pick goes, but if they don't make the playoffs, they keep the pick. Or if the pick is in the top three, they have the option to choose whether or not they want to get it back. There are so many stipulations for all of these picks that virtually every single one of them has the opportunity to get the first overall pick if they lose. And if what AJ Jakubic is saying is correct, and some of these play-in teams have Stutzla or Byfield at one, Lafreniere could honestly go to LA. Or maybe if things go even crazier and LA passes on Lafreniere because, hey, let's say a team takes Byfield first overall. And AJ Jakubic's statement earlier on was true that there's no way Stutzla goes beyond two, what if Ottawa gets Lafreniere? What if the draft goes Byfield 1, Stutzla 2, Lafreniere 3? That would be absolutely crazy, and honestly, I'm kind of pulling for it to happen just because I want the madness. I want to see this league implode, and I want to see the fans get upset because of how crazy this draft projection can go. Because honestly, if you made the argument to me that Quinton Byfield has a higher long-term ceiling than Lafreniere does, I would understand your point of view. You could say the same thing about Stutzla. The thing is, Lafreniere is the most polished, the most refined, and the most ready out of all the prospects in this draft. But when it comes to ceiling, who people see as a better player long term, 10 years from now, you could honestly make the argument that Stutzla or Byfield is better than Lafreniere. But that's only in the future. Today, Lafreniere is the better hockey player, and next season, Lafreniere is going to be the better hockey player. It's just the long-term upside of these prospects is so high that now, hearing that teams are thinking about Lafreniere at two or who knows, maybe three, I don't know, that's just me pulling that out of my own hat, it makes sense as to why it's happening. Sure, am I surprised to hear it? Yes, I am very surprised to hear it. When I saw this tweet in my timeline, I had to take a breather. But it's why it makes for such interesting discussion, because rarely does the guy that we've been pegging as number one for the entire season not go number one. We had that recently with Nolan Patrick when he dropped to second overall, but that was less of a surprise because Nolan Patrick was injured for a good part of that year, he was injured for a good part of his previous years, and Nico Hischier was just so good that by the time he was called first overall, not too many people were super surprised. The thing is, Alexi Lafreniere going second overall would be like if Darlene went second overall. It's like if Connor McDavid goes second overall and Eichel goes first. The surprise is going to be huge, but the fact is, we have an opportunity now to talk about it because according to AJ Jakubic, some teams may have it so. So let me know in the comments what you think about this whole idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was on the Trolls 99, and bye.